Hi, thank you for clicking on this video. The topic is computing the difference equation satisfied by the Stilchus transform of a sequence. Uh, this is joint work with Diego Dominici. Uh, the application of this work is related to the orthogonal polynomials. I will start out with some preliminaries. So the natural numbers will be always start with zero and we call a sequence of polynomials a monic basis if each qn is a polynomial. Uh, for each n, it is a polynomial of degree n, and the leading coefficient is one. So this condition turns it into a basis. Some examples for monic basis. So most standard is the monomial basis, and I would find it convenient to have a name for it, so I denote it by this mn of x. Then I will also use the falling factorial basis, x to the n falling, then it's defined as like so. And later I will use this phi n of x for the following factorials because this has been used in previous work related to this application. Last but not least, the rising factorial basis, x to the n rising, that is defined as this product here. And I will mostly write it using the Pochhammer symbol because it only appears in classical notation here. And uh, but this, this is, to me, seems more common. All these are monic basis, each is uh, for each n, all these are polynomials of degree n and the leading coefficient is one, as can be easily seen. So here's the Pochhammer symbol in the definition of the generalized type of stereometric functions. So here is the not so short notion of the right hand side. So we have <coughs> arguments in the numerator and denominator, they're all arguments of Pochhammer symbols, the argument of the this generative function is w to the k, and they are always normalized with this k factor. So it's an pure and an exponential generating function of this sequence here. These generalized hypergeometric functions, they appear in the definition of many special functions. For instance, as simple as the exponential, this would have zero arguments here and here. So it would be f0, 0, 0, w, and you just have the w to the k over k factorial. Or for instance, the Jacobi polynomial <coughs> that can be defined like this. So these are Jacobi polynomials that are orthogonal on the interval minus one, one. This minus n here in the numerator turns it to a polynomial of degree n. So it's a finite sum and this argument is no problem. Or the Charlier polynomials, they are discrete orthogonal polynomials that can be defined when using the hypergeometric function 2f0, only arguments in the numerator, and we have one over z here. And again, this is this minus n turns it into a polynomial of degree n. Okay. So um, <coughs> let me turn to something classical in symbolic computation by now. So holonomic functions. We call it formal powers, so use holonomic. If it satisfies a linear differential equation with polynomial coefficients. And a sequence a n is called holonomic if it satisfies a linear difference equation or occurrence. Uh, with polynomial coefficient. For each of those, I could, the right hand side, I wrote in my homogeneous, one could also put the polynomial here on the right hand side, the definition would be equivalent. Also equivalent is that if a uh, formal power series is holonomic, then its coefficient sequence is holonomic, and vice versa, if a sequence is holonomic, then its formal power series, its generating function is holonomic, and one can Given this representation, one can compute this linear differential equation and also the other way around. And in a sense, this is what we are doing, what we aim to do with something that is uh, not between difference and differential, but something that goes between a certain difference equation to a difference equation. Okay, and all these things that I just mentioned are uh, algorithmic and there are more algorithms to work with holonomic objects, not only univariate but also multivariate <coughs> with mixed difference and differential equations and there are many implementations so for instance in Maple there's GFAN, MGFAN, Mathematica, univariate generating functions and for the multivariate is holonomic functions or in JSH uh, the Aurea algebra package and if you look for these packages and the people you will find them and can also download them and use them. Okay, next thing that I need in the context of this talk is the so-called moment for functional. So if I'm given a sequence of monic, of a 
monic polynomials or monic bases, uh, the sequence of numbered and the linear functional that uh, assigns number to each polynomial is called the moment functional defined by this basis and this sequence of numbers. And <coughs> if a sequence of polynomials satisfies that uh, if I evaluate this moment functional with the input of the product PM PM, then this is non-zero only if n is not equal to m, so this is the Kronecker delta, and this hn is a non-zero positive number, then uh, this sequence is called an orthogonal polynomial sequence with respect to this moment functional. And the polynomials that we saw before are orthogonal polynomials and the moment functional can be written in a specific way. So as an example for the continuous case, I put the Jacobi polynomials that we saw earlier. So the uh, moment functional in this case looks like this. So we have a weight function, this is the weight function. The parameters alpha, beta are alpha, beta, both greater minus one. Um, and then this inner product different, uh, is the mode functional with respect to which the Jacobi polynomials are orthogonal on minus one, one. The discrete case, we saw earlier the Charlie polynomials. <coughs> and this is the, the mode function here is not an integral, but a sum from zero to infinity. And again, it's of a special form because I can write it using a weight function. So for the Charlier polynomials, the weight function looks like this. Okay, so next thing that we need, we had the Stilchus in the title. So let's get to the Stilchus transform. So classically, the Stilchus transform of a moment function L is defined as this, where S of T is L of one over T minus X, if L can be extended. Uh, to rational functions and L is always assumed in this talk to act of the variable X. Okay, so formally we can expand this uh, 1 over t minus x in this geometric series and hence if I apply now this linear moment function formally again, I end up with L of x to the n over this tn plus 1. I can write this using this mn and I denote the moments of the monomial basis by mu n, so I have the sum of mu n over m n plus one of t. And in the context of uh, the study of discrete orthogonal polynomials, people started looking at this stages transform in terms of the following factorial. So this now is actually exactly what we see here, just to replace the monomial basis by the following factorial basis. And this object is also the thing that I want to look at in the remainder of this talk. So we consider a nice sequence operator, capital Psi, defined like this. So we take a hit for the sequence and we output this right hand side. So if the sequence CN is such a moment uh, of the following factorials, then this Psi of mu n is just this S of t as defined here. Now what we want to do is, if we give it a moment functional with a sequence of moments that satisfy a holonomic recurrence, we want to compute an inhomogeneous linear difference equation with polynomial coefficients satisfied by the Stilchus transform of these moments. So in this one. So this is, in a sense, this going from a, a in, in this Malinger problem it would be recurrence equation to differential equation, RE to DE. So now we have recurrence to difference <laughs> equation if you want. Um, uh, the ideally, of course, we would like to also go back. So we have now the translation here and we're on the way to get the translation back. So uh, let me just mention that for the discrete semi-classical orthogonal polynomials, the discrete functionals are always of the form where the weight function is of this type. And if you want to look more into this background, I'm mentioning a couple of papers. So this first one is where I, I at least I saw the stitches transform associated to this following factorials in this context for the first time. And this is some classification of semi-classical orthogonal polynomials. So class one, class two, whatever this is. Okay, so 
now the moment with respect to folic factorials are given uh, by this, we have a weight fraction that looks like what we just saw, this hypergeometric expression times the following factorials. And then, for instance, for n equals zero, it's easy to see we have just this equation here. Uh, and this is just the uh, hypergeometric zero. So this plus one here, this is some classical uh, thing in this in the subject that people like to write it like this. And for n greater equals zero, we have this uh, formula that the new n are just the derivative of the new zero times some set to the n. And now this hypergeometric function, they've been studied classically by Gauss and uh, people surrounding, and they satisfy different, uh, they have many properties. So for instance, if you shift these parameters by one and take a couple of those. So for f to one, you take three of those, then you find the linear relation and many of more of these things. In particular, the derivative of such an FPQ is again an FPQ where all these parameters are just shifted by one and you have some factor in front that is also just of this type. Uh, so my point is that this new n are holonomic, so they satisfy a linear uh, difference equation in N, and this can be computed automatically using any of the packages that I mentioned, or some of the packages at least that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so what we want to do, we are given a moment functional with the secrets of moments satisfying a holonomic recurrence. We want to compute an inhomogeneous linear difference equation. So this is what I said before. So what we need to do really is here, uh, I have polynomials, so I have some n to the k or something n to the i times uh, shifts of this new n plus k. And I want to translate this basic objects into corresponding t to the something times, so into polynomials times shifts of this s, this generating function. Um, so what we need to accomplish this is to find this translation. Um, I'm skipping now the derivation. There's a from portal where I can look at this, but the, you can find that if you apply this operator psi to n to the p times new n, then it corresponds to this is the forward difference in T, an application of this Euler type operator minus forward difference in T times T, P times to the function, and this has this closed form where these polynomials appear that uh, are defined like so with uh, involving the Stirling numbers of the second kind. So this is this, and then if I also add the shift, then I end up with this formula which has here, again, these polynomials involving the Stirling numbers. So, and this is a, sorry, this is a simple formula. So this is easily implemented. I just go over my equation. I collect the terms, I translate, collect the terms again, and that's it. So let's look at some uh, particular examples. So we have the difference equations for the moment. So these are classical discrete orthogonal polynomials, the Chalier that we saw earlier, and then some others that are all of Mike Snagrafchuk, Han, classical orthogonal polynomials, so starting from this equation. The difference equation for the Stilchius fraction looks like this. Now we see here the inhomogeneity that we have in general that, uh, of course, we could also remove if necessary. Okay, and here are some more examples. So the generalized Chalier, Meixner, Kravchuk, or Han polynomials here are two types. The, here you see the weight functions. And for all those, you can use holonomic functions to compute a difference equations satisfied by the moment sequence, the new n. And from this, you can use our translation to the difference equation for the Stilchius transform. And as I said, the uh, way back is something that, so here in this translation, we use the monomial basis for the way back. It might well be that it's better to expand 
uh, these polynomials in terms of falling or rising factorials and then find a nice closed form to translate back up here. And that's where we are right now. So thank you for listening. And I hope to see you in the live session.